Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, October 11th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. We got Padres, Dodgers, Game 5 for the right to go to the National League Championship Series. Loser goes home and a trifecta of college football Friday Night Lights action coming your way. So let me know in the comments below what your picks are for tonight, for this weekend. All is welcome. Any questions, fire away. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. Guys, Sorry for the late start here. Hey, last night took a tough loss on uh, the Middle Tennessee State game. It wasn't pretty. Went to the local pizza shop, had a large pizza, three Pacificos, called it a night, and here we are, three espressos deep later, breaking down the Friday night card. Got some winners coming your way as it's been a great run here on the show, guys. If you've been following along, we've been profiting. Let me know in the comments below. And uh, Hey, it's three and two last night. Plus 0.9 units for the show. 17 and 5 run. That's uh, 77% starting last Friday. So 17 and 5, that's not bad. And oh, by the way, that's not minus 130, minus 150, claiming, you know, 60, 70%, not using the juice. We're up double digit units here, guys. We did lose with the Yankees, granted, as a favorite last or a couple nights ago, but we're counting that in, you know, plus 11.35 units, guys. So uh, it really comes down to the profits. It's been a good run here the last week on the show. Looking to keep it going here. Friday night lights action on the diamond up for Southern California Padres, Dodgers, 808 Eastern, 508 local time here as we head to Dodger Stadium. It's the Padres and the Dodgers game five, taking the trip up. On I-5 from San Diego to L.A. with you Darvish going for the Padres. Yamamoto in the battle of Japanese-born pitchers here. Dodgers, minus 140, home favorites, total of eight. Getting it going with the starting pitching handicap here, guys. The Padres are 6-0 and the last time, six times Darvish has taken the hill. That's since he's returned to the rotation. That includes three starts against the Dodgers. Only one earned run his last 14 innings pitched against these Dodgers bats. They've won 9 of 11 overall since Darvish has taken the hill. He's a guy I'm looking to be betting on. He's up against Yamamoto. Yamamoto's allowed 11 runs his last 11 innings overall. 13 runs his last three starts against the Padres. Don't like that pass performance here. I think it's a huge advantage towards the Padres starter. Now, granted, it is an all-hands-on-deck type of situation. If you lose, your season's over. So both of these two guys, if they get into trouble, uh, might have short outings here. But I think it even speaks to more. If Darvish does have a good start, which I think he will, uh, I think it even favors the Padres a little bit more. Plus price next to their name. Last thing here, a trend. No National League team since the playoffs expanded in 2022 has had the bye and made the National League Championship Series. Dodgers fit that bill. I think it continues here, guys. I think the Padres, as the dog, are worth a play. Plus 128, listing Darvish as the starters. How we're starting our Friday night Drew's Daily Diamond show. It's Darvish and the Padres, plus 128 over the Dodgers to cash their ticket into the National League Championship Series. Flipping the script here to college football, we got 8 p.m. Eastern in the Big Ten. It's Northwestern and Maryland. Maryland, minus 11, 45 and a hook being the total. Two teams winless in conference. Big game for both sides. Northwestern comes in losing to Indiana last week. Short week with travel. Not usually a good thing, although they don't have to wait too long off of the loss. They are 4-0 against the spread against Maryland since the Terps have entered the Big Ten Conference. They're a scrappy team, a team I'm looking to bet on more so than kind of fade. Now, Maryland laying 11 here. They are off of a bye and playing at home like that setup. But their head coach, Loxley, he's just 3-8 and eight off the bye week. So going from how coaches kind of coach him up with the extra preparation time, he really hasn't fit that bill. I'm not looking to lay doubles here with a low total. The market's telling us Points are going to be at a premium with 45 and a hook as the total. We'll go with the scrappy Northwestern side, plus 11 to stay within double digits tonight in the Big Ten. Heading out west, 9 p.m. Eastern, we got UNLV and Utah State in the Mountain West. 66 and a hook being the total, minus 19. That's the Running Rebels as the road favorite. This is the largest road favorite price in UNLV program history. So kind of rarefied air here. They are coming off the loss to Syracuse last Friday night, a game that went back and forth, a lot of scoring. When you're doing research about UNLV, you know the quarterback, NIL, he leaves. Malik Williams comes in. Uh, the 
quote unquote backup quarterback. He's completed over 80% of his passes. And uh, that quarterback running, uh, running back run game that UNLV has going, it has been working. They're averaging just less than 200 yards rushing on the ground. And that's including against tougher defenses than they're going to be facing tonight. That's against Kansas, Houston, Syracuse, Fresno State, all ranking better defensive statistics than Utah State. So I think UNLV is going to be able to put up some yards, put up some points here. Now, looking at the, the Utah State side of things, the Aggies can't stop the run. That speaks to even more UNLV being able to put up some points. This is a defense that led up almost 200 yards rushing to the Temple Owls. Owls. The defense led up an average of more than 450 yards per game so far against FBS competition in their last four. They're 0-4 against FBS teams. So defensively, this, this Aggie squad is just near the bottom of college football. Now, if you're looking for positives, they are top 40 in both yards per play and yards per game. So this is, a, this is an offense that has been you know, successful, at least at times. I mean, top 40 across college football, that's not too bad. Now, granted, they've been playing from behind a lot. They'll likely be pay playing from behind in tonight's matchup, but still it speaks to them being able to move the football. Now, we've seen this total go from 64 to 66 and a half. It's not the same move, though, guys, as 44 to like 46 and a half. That is a more significant move with a lower total. With these higher totals, numbers always matter, but I would follow this move, guys. I, I think there's going to be a bunch of points tonight in Logan, Utah. Mountain West, Friday Night Lights. Hey, it's a score fest. We're going up and over. UNLV, Utah State, over 66 and a half. Got one game left. It's the Degenerate Special. Final time slot on the Friday Night Slate, 10.30 p.m. Utah and Arizona State. Guys, a reminder, if you could comment below, it does help out the algorithm. If you're riding this 17 and 5, 77% run plus double digit units, hey, let me know. The last week has been fun. Hopefully, we, uh, I, I'm feeling good about this Friday Night Lights uh, action. Let me know in the comments uh, if you agree, if you disagree, what you're looking to bet. Check out Premium Picks. We got the all inclusive deal through New Year's Eve. Drew Martin, experts page, wagertalk.com, over $500 off every play, every sport there all-inclusive through New Year's Eve, the rest of the calendar year. All right, let's get into it. Degenerate special, get back spot, Utah, Arizona State, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 local time here, 46 and a hook being the total. Utah, minus five-point road favorites. This is in Tempe, Arizona, some a place I know personally. Going to be a good tailgating experience, probably good atmosphere there in the stadium. Utah comes in, extra preparation time, off of a bye week, and off of a loss. I like that. Their head coach, Kyle Whittingham, getting getting the guys going off of a loss and uh, and a bye week. Now, I mean, is Cam Rising playing? Is he not? I'm getting kind of sick of reading about this. But I'll tell you this, guys. Off of a loss in the Big 12 Conference, they might get two teams into the playoffs. Probably just one, though. And I don't know how many more losses they can really afford here. This is a pretty deep conference. So if he's going to be playing... Tonight's probably the night he comes back, and this offense really needs him. If he doesn't play tonight, I'm not looking into it anymore until he actually gets on the field. Um, Utah won 55-3 last year. How much changes in one just one season? Well, Arizona State is 4-1 and one so far this season. They played, what, Texas State got that close win, three wins by one score or less, and the schedule includes Wyoming, Mississippi State, and Kansas. All of those teams have kind of been disappointing out the gate this year. So I almost think their record is making them look a little bit better than they actually are on the field. And in my opinion, they're going up against the best team. I know they lost Utah in their last game, but I think this is the best team in the conference in the Big 12. We get the extra preparation time under Kyle Whittingham off the loss. I think the Utes are the side here, guys. I think they win by more than a touchdown. Utah Utes minus five to end the Friday slate here, guys. In recap, we are on Utah State, UNLV up and over 66 in the hook. We're on Northwestern plus 11 to stay within double digits of Maryland in the Big Ten. And the first game we talked, it's Padres Dodgers. Man, what a big one. Plus 128, the dog is barking. Listing Darvish as the starter. We're on the Padres over the Dodgers. Guys, that's going to do it for the Friday show. We'll be back on Saturday and Sunday. Come back and join us. Smash that like button, comment below. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Cash those tickets.